but how do you get a good introduction? Let's talk about that right now. If we have not met before, my name is Kit Pang, the founder of Boston Speaks, and this channel is all about helping you improve your communication and public speaking skills. One thing I want to start off with is a lot of people ask, should I memorize my talk? Okay, think about this one key before we get into a good introduction. If you have, it's okay to read from your notes, but you really have to memorize your beginning and your ending. It's usually because if you are looking at notes right at the beginning, you are not building that emotional connection as if you are looking in the eyes of your audience. So at the beginning and the ending, it's really important that you memorize your introduction and your ending, even if it's, if it's the first three to four or five sentences. The difference is, well, I'm looking at my page versus I'm looking at you. Even, for example, hi, my name is Kit, or hi, my name is Kit, right? Those few seconds are very important, and that's the first thing you have to know about first an introduction and also the end. But how do you craft a really, really good introduction? Well, do you watch Netflix or do you uh, read any books? You can also just, just think about this. I think about sex, right? Sexy public speaking skills that you can use if you really want a good introduction. The S actually stands for surprise. You want to surprise your audience. Every single one that might be out there giving a talk or they give a pitch, they might say, hi everyone, my name is blah, 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 or I do this and I'm from this company. You want to give them a surprise, give them some mystery, give them something new, give them something that's you. Your first few sentences, it should be a little bit scary sometimes too because maybe you've never done it before or it's out there. You see, some people are scared to start off with a story. They first, for example, they, they feel like they have to be safe and they feel like they have to say, okay, my name is Kit and today, blah, 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 blah. Now, which is okay, but again, people expect that. If you, let's say, for example, if you start off with something fresh, a surprise. Now, a surprise doesn't have to be, wow, it's gonna be so surprising, you're gonna knock me out of my seat. It could be surprising in a way that the audience does not expect it. You can even say, you go up to the podium. The other day, I was walking in downtown crossing, and you might, you will not believe what happened to me, okay? Little stuff like that. So, but find something that resonates with you. And if you find something that is really, really uh, interesting to you, put it out there. People like surprises, okay? That's what the S stands for. The E stands for educate. Why do people go on Google? Why do people go on YouTube like you are right now? Because people like to learn. You want to give them something of depth in your introduction. If you don't have a, so when you educate people, you are also giving them a point. So in your tr introduction, people should understand why they are listening to you. Are they there to listen to you because they, they're going to learn something new? Right? You want to educate, educate them or give them a, a point to go towards because if you just tell a 10-minute story, at the end of the day, people will be thinking, oh, what's your point? So in the introduction, all you have to do is be clear. Let them know your point educate them, give them something to go towards to. And the X and S-E-X stands for examples. Now, it's very hard, even though I just talked about educating, it's very hard to read a nonfiction book 24-7, you know. It's very hard to watch the news 24-7. We need some kind of release. And that's why we go to um, Netflix. That's why we read fiction books, because you have to give examples. And what I'm really talking about are stories, something that you can relate to the heart, okay? So how can you tell a good story? First of all, you have to understand this. You can flip into story mode by going into a time and a place. That's it. The other day, I was in my, uh, my, in my office and this woman came in. Look, a time and a place and you will flip into story mode. So the S stands for something surprising. The E stands for educate them. The X stands for example. Basically, you're talking to the head and you're talking to the heart. And you give them something new so they can pay attention at the very beginning. You want people to pay attention at the very beginning because if you lose them at the very beginning already, why would they even pick up with you at the middle? Think of it this way. If you are going to run right at a race and you start off walking, you're going to be really, really slow. If you start off in a good pace, 
you're gonna carry carry the audience through. So really give them something that here's the thing. They asked Adele, you know the singer, how do you know when your, your next song is going to be a viral hit? And you know what she said? She says she cries when she's writing that song. Now I'm not saying for you to you know cry over your introduction, but she feels it, right? She is vulnerable. So in your introduction, if you don't feel something, the audience will not feel anything. So in a good introduction, make sure you feel it, right? And just follow those three steps. Give them something fresh, give them something new, tell them a point, educate them in something, and give an example to base your point off of. Again, my name is Kit Pang, and if you liked any of uh, the tips that I gave you today, what did you like best? Or maybe you can come up with an introduction in the comments below. I would love to hear it. If you have any questions, again, you can also drop them down in the comments below. Bye-bye.